My husband started divorce proceedings and don't even want to talk to me. I don't know how or even if I can fix any of this. He has said he would come and talk to me the last three days, but he hasn't showed up. What's going on everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another story. Well, this is an update. So yesterday, yesterday I did a story about a guy. He discovered his wife cheating. He held on to the information for a while and, you know, eventually uh, hit her with divorce and she freaked out. She freaked out, man. Um, Wow. It was, it was a, very very interesting story so um just checking out the comments yesterday i started getting comments people saying like hey there's a there's her side of the story she tells her side of the story i said wow that's pretty interesting and um shout out to the person who actually emailed me before i guess someone emailed me this before and i remember he, he i remember reading in the email hey um i found this story where i where the husband tells his side of the story. And I think this is the wife's side of the story. It's very interesting. I said, okay. And I never got to ch check it out. But I did stumble across the story yesterday. And he let me know, like, hey, that's the story I was talking about. So I said, oh, okay, well. Um, and not only him, other people said, hey, she has her side. She has her side. So why not continue it? Why not tell her side? So let's let's see what she's saying on her side. Um I'll put the link to this in the description like usual. You guys read the title. It's an update to yesterday's story. So uh, let's just get into it. So I ruined everything for nothing. She said she had to repost this like he said because they got nasty messages or whatever. But she said I got a lot of nasty messages in my original posting. I, I guess I deserve that. I didn't want to, but my husband suggested I repost so, so others maybe can learn and not do the same mistakes. I would not use this account moving forward apart from the PM dialogues so I have with a few select people to help me. Edit, I have had a PM dialogue with my husband. I found out he posted a few days ago. We have agreed to meet later today. I will pick myself up for the sake of my children and I will fight for our marriage. I know I have no right to, but I refuse to give up. My heart won't let me. I will fix myself. I know how broken I am. Reading the comments here was incredibly painful, but thanks to all of you. I have managed to get myself out of bed and I know what I want to do. It remains to be seen if I am successful, but at least I will try. I don't know how yet, but I will try to figure it out. Wow, so she didn't know that her husband had posted this. Huh. Interesting. Well, I've had a story like this before, actually, and it was sent to me through email. Um, a guy had wrote me his story, and it was it was wild. And then his wife had wrote me in the email, and then it and then it had turned out that they had went and posted uh, their stories on Reddit, and uh, it was pretty big stories. And I'm like, wow! And people were telling me like, hey, this story is on Reddit. Some people knew that they had emailed me first and, and I did the stories and then they went to Reddit and, and did it. Um, some people didn't. They were like, hey, this story is actually a Reddit story and things like that. So it kind of got a little a little mixed up there. But um, then those some of those people started coming back and saying like, oh, well, they said that you left out a few things or whatever. I didn't really I didn't leave out anything. Um, maybe they I don't know. I didn't leave out anything, but um, that's happened before. And I've actually, I think it was another story I've done a while ago. And someone said, hey, there's a there's a woman's perspective. I said, really? But I, for some reason, I didn't get I didn't get to that one. But yeah, this seems to happen um, every once in a while. So, wow. Interesting. I don't really know where to begin. I have destroyed my family, my husband is leaving me, and my children, my children don't even want to be in the same room with me. My sister suggested I post here to maybe get some advice. It took a lot of effort to even type this out. 
I have been crying for weeks and I found that I was lying to myself, trying to make myself look better in this story. What hope is there when I can't even be honest to just me, all alone by myself? I am in a terrible state, so this is a bit all over the place. Sorry about the wall of gibberish in advance. I am a 38 year old female. My husband is 39, male. We have four children, 15 to 8 years old, and we have been together since I was 16. Married 18 great years. I had an affair. It felt great for a while. Now in hindsight, I know it was all delusion, a fantasy. Now I am so ashamed I don't know the words to even describe it. I can't even look at myself in the mirror. Everybody hates me, including my own sister, who is the only person that would take me in. My sister is also a cheater, by the way. Her fiancé left her for it. Still, she yells at me constantly, telling me what a piece of crap I am. She found out about my affair early on. She warned me I was on a path of disaster if I didn't stop immediately and come clean. I was too selfish and stupid to see that. I was too wrapped up in myself to listen to her, so I refused to stop. She in turn cut me out of her life until she picked me up. My husband started divorce proceedings and don't even want to talk to me. I don't know how or even if I can fix any of this. He has said he would come and talk to me the last three days, but he hasn't showed up. I can't blame him. I hurt him so badly. I broke him, my family, my children, myself, and I wish so much I could take their pain away and just disappear. All I do is stay in bed staring at the ceiling, hating myself. Whenever it's quiet, it feels like my heart is trying to escape from my chest. I get panic attacks where I struggle to breathe. Where I struggle to breathe. I am hardly able to eat. Whenever I fall asleep in my nightmares, I see my husband's pain and him looking at me without love in his eyes. The therapist I have been seeing believes this may be started for me about three years ago. My best friend from school died suddenly from cancer. She never married. He was a par she was a partner in a law firm and had an extravagant lifestyle. I have always admired her. I have an okay career in marketing and have been a stay-at-home mom for long periods when our children were small. The time at home with my children was the best time of my life. For some reason, I started re-examining my life when my friend died, especially what, what I hadn't done. I became very critical of myself. I started feeling inadequate. My self-esteem plummeted. I had only ever been with my husband, and I started to resent him for it, like he had denied me romance and experiences or something. In reality, I twisted it around in my head. It was me that actually pursued him. I was the one that wanted marriage and a family. I felt like I should have done better with my life, experienced more, done more. Somehow I managed to blame my husband for it all. I didn't actually talk to him about it. Deep down I knew it was just stupid. Still I grew resentful. Gradually over time I would push my husband away. I had no reason at all to feel this way. I had a loving attentive husband, happy healthy children, a good job, great sex life, Hobbies, good health, nice vacations, friends, great extended family, good economy. My life was wonderful by most measures. Of course, it wasn't perfect, but whose is? My younger sister got engaged around this time. She had been a bit of a party animal growing up, and her fiancé was wonderful. I became jealous of her, like her life had been better than mine somehow. Mm, that reminds me of something. <laughs> Dang, that reminds me of something, man. My sister cheated on her fiancé before they got married, and he left her. She was devastated. She has told me that it's her biggest regret, but it's only now that, sh that the shoe is on my foot that I understand her. Somehow I got obsessed with her cheating. I started having fantasies about it, dreaming about it. So about seven months ago, I started to respond from flirting from a younger married co-worker. Hmm. It turned into an emotional affair almost immediately. I loved the attention. He knew just what to say somehow. The first two months was a whirlwind. So exciting, a massive rush. During this time, I neglected my husband and my family. I would deny my husband intimacy, and I treated him very poorly. Somehow, I managed to resent him for what I was doing. I blamed him for guilt I was feeling. Looking back, I clearly see how much I hurt him. I saw the pain on his face. Pain is so easily ignored at the time. 
I remember how hard he tried to win me back, but at the time I somehow managed to justify in my mind that what was going on was right. I deserved it. In my mind, everybody should just be happy for me. I managed to convince myself that I was entitled to this affair, that it was good for me, and that nothing else mattered. It's turned from an emotional to a physical affair at around two months. The sex was mediocre at best. My AP was a very selfish lover. When it turned physical, the excitement I felt during the emotional affair started to slowly die off. I kept the affair going. I wanted that initial excitement back. But the more time I spent time with the AP, the less I felt that initial rush. We never had a real or deep emotional connection. It was just pretend. Still, I actually believed I loved him. I was also starting to feel more and more guilty for what I was doing. I took it out on my husband. Somehow I managed to blame him for how I felt and was absolutely terrible to him. Then I felt guilty for that, blamed him for that too, and treated him even worse because of it. Around two months into the physical affair, I noticed a drastic change in my husband's behavior. He stopped trying to initiate intimacy. He stopped all the little things he used to do for me. He used to leave love notes around for me to find. Normally, he would be going out of his way to make me laugh or smile. He used to kiss and hug me all the time and make this little joyful sound when he did so. He stopped including me in his life. He would not even engage me in conversation. He used to make my favorite meals on the days I had to work late. Now he didn't even make a plate for me when he made normal dinner. He would only make food for himself and the kids. I tried arguing with him about it, but he just left the house without even saying a word. I didn't want to accept it. I was in denial. But I know now that he had completely disconnected from our relationship already. The affair with the AP deteriorated quickly after that. Still, it continued for almost over a month before I finally broke it off with my AP. Strangely enough, I haven't had any desire to have any more contact with him. I started going to individual counseling. My therapist pretty much spelt it all out for me. Still, it didn't sink in. I refused to come clean. I started to desperately try to reconnect with my husband. I was still in total denial. I managed to convince myself that if I acted like the perfect wife, he would come back to me. My husband showed me no interest at all, but he would come around eventually, I told myself. I believed the crushing guilt would go away if I could reconnect with my husband. I believed he would return to normal, stronger than ever. He would never know the full truth of my betrayal. I would dress up the way he likes, spotlessly clean the house, try to initiate, cook his favorite meal, anything I could think of. Nothing worked. Even if I tried to just touch his hand, he would pull away from me. My husband would barely look at me. He would spend a lot of time out of the house. When I tried to talk to him, in most cases, he wouldn't even respond. If he answered at all, it would be along, it would be along the lines of, I don't care. Then he would just leave. Deep down, I know I had lost my husband. I just refused to accept it. Before this, whenever he looked at me, there was always this tremendous amount of love in his eyes. He would rest his eyes on me for long periods of time and just lovingly smile. Now whenever I looked at his eyes, the love was gone and he would barely even glance at me. Still, I managed to convince myself that he, we would be alright. Still, I hadn't started to cry. A few weeks ago, my husband was in the kitchen when I came home. He was smiling for the first time in a long time. I sat down and... And the rest of the conversation is actually a bit blurry, but I found out my husband knew about the affair almost the entire time. At the end of his speech, he told me he would divorce in such a way that he clearly expected me to enthusiastically want to divorce as well. The reality of my actions crashed in on me all at once. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't see clearly. I just couldn't form coherent thoughts or sentences. I don't know how long I sat there babbling, but my sister came and picked me up. She was talking to me in the car. I don't actually know what she said. I think I was in shock. Some days after that, my husband came to talk to me. I had been desperately reading online about ways to fix a marriage after infidelity. I had even prepared a full written confession and a timeline for him. I offered him everything, a post up 100% in his favor, 
full access to everything, anything he wanted at any time, anything at all, if he would just stay with me. He took the timeline, but he didn't even want to read it. I confessed everything, and for and for a second I saw that pain flash across his face. In the same pain that I had so easily ignored so many times during the affair, even that flash was unbearable to me. I could see that he was clearly hiding his pain from me. This hurt me even more. He still was, st he was still being courteous and fair with me, even though I didn't deserve any of it. Sitting there, I finally had to accept that there was no longer love for me in his eyes. The only thing I could see was distrust and disappointment. As he argued with me, I could no longer deny that this was all my fault. I had broken my husband's trust. I had broken him. He used to be kind, considerate, open, full of jokes. This new man in front of me that I created, he was a somber and emotional brick wall, a man that only cared about moving on. He explained in excruciating detail how badly I hurt him, how he would never be the same. Without even blinking, he told me that he... He told me that the love he once had for me had died, killed by my choices. He wants to start dating. He even has a woman in mind. He didn't want to cheat like me, so he wants to divorce as soon as possible. I can't really understand how I managed to mess up my life so badly. I have destroyed my family, and now my children will have to suffer through divorce and the pain of growing up in a broken home. At some point after that, I fell unconscious, and I woke up in the hospital. My sister was there, but my husband was not. That devastated me even more. When I came to, I started calling everyone, confessing what I had done. I called the AP's wife, his parents, his parents, our friends, my employer. I resigned as well. Basically, I called everyone I could think of. Everybody hates me now, and I deserve it. Still, my husband isn't talking to me. I destroyed my family, broke the love of my life, traumatized my kids. And for what? Some cheap thrills? I don't understand how I could do this. Can I get my husband to talk to me? How can I even ask him to do that? How can I ever face my children again? What do I even say to them? I desperately want to repair this, but how could I even start? Is it even possible? I am completely lost. I don't know what to do. I don't see any way out. Wow. Let me give my thoughts on this. Selfish, 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 man. Selfish. She had everything she wanted. She said she had the perfect husband. She had her children. She she was happy when she stayed home to raise her children. So what you guys created together, it you you loved through the roof. You you were so you had what you wanted. But then you looked at your sister. And felt like you were missing out. You looked at other people and felt like you were missing out. Your friend. That's ridiculous. And this is what happens a lot, guys. When she said her friend and her sister made her realize like she was missing out on something, that hit me because I've experienced that with a woman. I, have you? Has anyone ever been in a relationship? And let's say you're around another couple. And let's say they just got engaged, um, whatever. They just bought a brand new car. They bought a brand new house. And you go home with your, your, your woman and she's telling you, why can't we do that? I want to, knowing our situation is completely different. We're, we have a goal that we're trying to meet. So we're going to do it. We're going to do, we're going to buy a house together in X amount of years. We're going to get married in X amount of years or we're going to get engaged in X amount of months, uh, whatever, whatever it is. We ha you ha you already have a plan with this woman or if you even if for the guys who've been married, whatever it is, her friend and her friend's husband are going to Barbados on vacation. And she hits you with, why can't we go to Barbados? You know what I'm saying? It's annoying. They're so influenced by everything outside of the relationship. Now, if she's not focused about what's going on outside, she's the happiest person in the world. I have beautiful children. We're happy. We're having fun. We probably they probably had movie nights and 
things that game nights and things like that. Um, her husband was loving to her, gave her everything she needed. And but as soon as she looks outside the relationship and sees other people doing other things. Oh, I'm missing out. Guys, this happens all the time. I've personally ex experienced this multiple times. It's always Hmm, my friend is doing this. Why can't we do it? Your your sister is doing this. Why can't we do it? Your brother and his girlfriend did this. Why can't we do it? That wasn't even a thought until you saw other people doing it. Now it's something that you need. And it actually can ruin it actually does ruin the relationship. Because then she, she starts complaining and all this crap. Which brings me to my next point of this is why it's not cool to allow your woman or this is not cool for a wife or a woman that's in a monogamous relationship to have male friends. Now, a lot of women will say they're just friends. They're just friends. But you dig into those DMs. You dig into those text messages. This guy has either smashed your wife or your girlfriend before. He wants to smash your wife or your girlfriend. Or he's just flirty with her. And she she deletes her responses to him or she'll just laugh, LOL, at whatever little flirty comment he says. But here's the thing. She keeps back up just in case, just in case you mess up in her eyes, even if it's her messing up, even if it's her looking at outside influences coming back to you to complain. And she says, babe, yeah, I know we just went to Hawaii this year. But can we can we go to Barbados also? I want to go there it's to, to an all inclusive, you know, vacation. Can we just do that? You're like, no, nah, that's not in the budget. No, we're not doing that, babe. We got to pay for this. We got to do that. No, no, no. All that. No, that word. No, is enough for her to go into that DM or go back to work when that guy is flirting with her. She's going to accept that flirting. She's going to start flirting back. And she, oh, we're just going to lunch. And then that's when she starts lying. It was just lunch. We're working on a project together. Oh, I'm going out for a girl's night out. That girl's night out. I've experienced that. I know a lot of you guys have too. Going out for a girl's night out. I'll be back. And she's actually with another dude. Because you said no. Because you said no. I'm telling you, man, in my opinion, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. You can give her everything. Everything. Your hey, baby, it's yours. Kiss her every day. You know, write her little love notes. All that. Everything she says she needs in a man. And it's not enough. She still wants more or different because she feels like she's missing out and it's so ridiculous and it's selfish you have children and a husband that loves you and you'll destroy it for mediocre sex it's ridiculous guys i'll put this link in the description like usual i'll also link yesterday's video so you guys can check out that video and in yesterday's video i'll go ahead and throw the link for this one in the description as well so you guys can check out both stories read through both stories um listen to both stories and let me know what you think about this in the comments i'll catch you guys at the next one